one here. So uh, let's just hop in. Uh, so as you can see, you probably already read the slide deck here and you probably already uh, came to the talk based on the title of it. But in this uh, session, we're going to be going over our Q4 email strategy that we've used to generate over a million dollars in a weekend. That's not like a cumulative number, but that's actually for a single brand. Um, so you'll, you'll see some more examples in a second, but this is an extremely powerful strategy that we've tested and really perfected over the last four years that works exceptionally well inside of Q4, uh, especially in 2020. So I'm Dylan Kelly. I'm CEO of a company called Wavebreak, and uh, I'll introduce myself in a second. But before we get to who exactly I am, I just want to talk about why I'm so excited to talk about this as a topic. Um, and basically the biggest thing is like right now, ad costs are already getting more expensive uh, and they're only going to keep rising as we get closer to Q4. Uh, so I started Wave Break back in 2016. Uh, back then, you know, it was like the glory days of Facebook. You can just throw up a Facebook ad and you can make a ton of money. Uh, it's, it's not quite the same anymore. And especially over the last 30 days, we're noticing a lot more trends. Things are going to get more expensive as we go into Q4. That happens every year. Um, but this year we have the election, which is playing into it even more. And a lot of brands, uh, we're seeing CPM sometimes as high as like $300, um, just going through the roof. Like 2020 was already interesting, but I think this next month is really going to be really going to be tough for brands who are over, overly reliant on an acquisition strategy uh, without the retention dialed. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So in the next 30 minutes, uh, I'm going to try to move as fast as we can to get through it all. Uh, but you're going to be learning how you can have your biggest Q4 ever by leveraging your existing audience and customers. So the, the way we use the strategy, uh, no ads are required. That being said, it, it's not to say you don't need front-end acquisition traffic, that is super important. Uh, but the piece we're gonna be talking about today is like what you already have and how you can make the most of it. And then also how to do it specifically for 2020. So obviously the topic of this is email marketing. Uh, and, and this year things are even different. The inbox is different. Uh, you know, there's a whole different landscape. So we've taken the strategy that we've used over the last four years, tested it not only over the last four years, but also this year, uh, and then based on all the data we have, this is how we're strategizing for 2020. So it's completely up to date. Um, it's going to absolutely dominate these next few weeks into the end of the year. So background on me, my name is Dylan Kelly. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Wavebreak. Uh, we're a boutique agency where all we do is email and SMS marketing for some of the fastest growing brands inside of e-commerce. Um, and th those brands hire us to build and manage world-class email and SMS marketing programs for them. Uh, if you recognize my voice, uh, probably not my face because it's a podcast, but uh, I'm also the host of the Wave Break podcast sponsored by Clavio. Done over 150 interviews um, over the last three years, I guess, uh, which is crazy. Time flies with a lot of top brands, uh, Parachute Home, Pop Sockets, Vanity Planet. Um, just did one with Cuts Clothing. That, was, that uh, is a really good one you should listen to. Sponsored by Clavio. Um, and then in addition to, to that, we're currently powering uh, and help our clients generate an additional over $100 million a year in email revenue alone. That doesn't count SMS or any of the other stuff we do. Uh, so what that means is I have a really good pulse on what's happening in the marketplace and also like how to be successful with email. Uh, this isn't coming from just like, you know, things I'm making up. This is tried and true and tested strategies and tactics that we'll be going over today. And specifically, what you're going to be learning today is uh, one of our methodologies that we use this time of year. Uh, especially, and we call this methodology the big wave method. Um, so it's it's a really nice way to say this is going to generate a tsunami of revenue uh, for your brand. And it's probably not what you think. It's not as simple as an email sequence with ideal times. It's actually a lot more advanced than that. Um, so let's just hop into that. So if you want to have your biggest queue forever, this is going to be your secret weapon. And like I said before, like using this, we've held multiple brands drive anywhere from four hundred thousand dollars to over a million dollars in a single week. Uh, and sometimes even in a single weekend, depending on the period that we use it. Uh, so it's super effective. And like I said, it didn't happen by accident. It didn't happen by chance or luck. This is something that we've reverse engineered over the last few years. Um, and we tested it over and over again to make it effective. And we baked it down into a proven process that we call the big wave method. And what's great about the strategy is not only does it work during Q4, it works all year long, uh, but it's a extra powerful during Q4 because you've got promotional and just the way we do it, you'll, you'll understand this at the end, why it's extra powerful during Q4. Um, but it's just a way more advanced way to look at Black Friday, Cyber Monday and Q4 from an email perspective. Um, so to start things off, email marketing isn't what it used to be. You can still make a ton of money with it and it's still a top channel, but you can't just spray and pray like it's 2005. In fact, like you can't even spray and pray like it's 2015 and you can't even email like it's 2018 or 2019 because that's how fast the game is changing. Um, it can still be a top channel and it still is a top channel and it absolutely should be. Um, but the piece that you have to remember is like, just like your Facebook ads have been evolving, just like your brand has been evolving, your email program needs to evolve too. 
And that's that's a huge mistake that we see at Waybreak is like the, the brands that we work with and just brands in general is there two big mistakes that e-commerce brands make when it comes to their email uh, and their life cycle, retention, marketing, whatever you want to call it. Um, so <clears throat> there's really like a hundred or a thousand mistakes that brands are making, but the two biggest one that's costing them a lot of money in the short term and the long term are these two. So the first one is they send random emails here and there without much long term thought. There's not a whole advanced strategy. You're not thinking more than maybe even a day ahead sometimes. Um, and that really hurts. Even just thinking a month ahead usually isn't enough to do uh, a, a, to have a world class experience through email. Um, and the second piece is just a lack of consistency, whether it's sending emails consistently, whether it's how your brand comes across over email. I mean, you could be selling an amazing high ticket product. Uh, but if your emails afterwards look terrible and they drive a bad customer experience, uh, that's a bad email program. Um, and so the, the two biggest things is like getting more strategic and getting more strategic and more consistent, excuse me, is going to really help you unlock the next level of growth. Uh, because without it and without a world class email program, it's literally money flushed down the drain. So like the hundred million a year that we're driving for our clients from email alone, like that's money that wouldn't exist without email. Um, so you don't want to make that mistake because even at the smallest level, it's a costly thing. Uh, that you just don't want to deal with, especially as ads have become so volatile and we don't know what's going to happen over the next two months with the election and what's happening with Facebook. And we've already seen trends of things getting more expensive. Uh, so we want to maximize the amount of revenue and profit we keep in the business. And the best way to do that is not by spending more on Facebook, but is by finding the hidden places that money already exists inside the business, which for the majority of brands is already within their email program, even if you're already emailing. And one of the key pieces that we see all the time is you can't dominate Q4 or, or any time of year with a dead email list. Uh, so many brands are on their list in the ground. They're not doing enough. There's a bunch of different things here. Um, but what you actually need to do is keep a real consistent communication with your clients or with your customers and um, keep that sucker warm. Uh, it's extremely valuable, but if you let it go to waste, it's like you have to start all over again. So here's what to do instead. Like this is the first key piece of the strategy. Step one, prime your email list, not Amazon prime, but like prime it, like you're painting a wall or something. Um, so we call this list priming. Um, and you want to use it to warm up your email list and have them ready to buy in Q4. So we did a guest post on this on the Klaviyo blog, uh, a while ago. Uh, it, it was really well received. Um, but I'm going to break it down for you today on what that actually looks like in practice. Um, because here's the reality, you have to stop sending random email campaigns that have no rhyme or reason to them. And if you want to really crush it during Q4 and throughout the roaring 2020s, like for some brands, they're absolutely going to crush. Meanwhile, other brands are going to really hurt and, uh, you're eventually going to die. Uh, you need to take a step back and stop marketing tactically and start marketing strategically. And what that means is thinking about why and how people actually buy. So I'll give you an example. One reason people don't buy is because they have objections. Uh, so what you can do is strategically set up your emails uh, leading into Black Friday to take object to take objections off the table and answer FAQs. If you just blast out a discount come November, uh, that's great. You'll probably do a lot of revenue, but there's a lot of people, probably the majority of people who don't trust you. They don't understand how your products work. Like I think this is a great example from Reebok here, uh, where it's like their three biggest objections are addressed in this email. So it's a very simple email. It's only like four lines of text, but I bet it converts really well. Uh, so their common objections are probably around, ooh, what if it doesn't fit? What's my size? Uh, I don't know what to get you. have too many options. Uh, I, I don't know if I like any of your new styles. I didn't like your old ones. And they answer those right in the questions, right on this email. Not sure what size. We have 30-day free returns. Like all these things that you know and come naturally to you, your customers don't know. They saw you on a Facebook ad. They saw you on an influencer post. They, they clicked the Google ad and you know somehow now they're on your email list. Uh, the things that come naturally to you, they don't understand. So what you want to do is reverse engineer those objections and leading up to Black Friday, take the biggest ones off the table. Because what ends up happening is then when you pull that discount lever, like not only are people going to buy once their objections gone now, but when you pull the lever of the extra discount or the promotion or whatever you end up running, uh, you're going to end up making a lot more money then because now everybody who's getting that email doesn't have any objections because you've already addressed those objections. You've answered the FAQs, built that trust leading up to Black Friday. Another thing you want to do um, is stop being so salesy. So like people don't engage with your emails because they're selfish and salesy all the time. Like it's easy to make a lot of money sending out a discount every day, uh, but that's not effective in the long term. And one thing you want to do instead is send emails that are filled with valuable content. So blog posts, this example here from Shadow Wild, uh, it's a lookbook, tips and tricks, videos uh, for clients who are really involved with Gen Z. We, we've been sending TikToks. It's been doing really well. Uh, you can create Spotify playlists. You can uh, create wallpapers and send them to your audience. There's a lot of different ways you can be creative without selling, uh, you know, 
promoting content and all those, like you do a lot of fun things. And what, what's, what's crazy about this strategy is like, it sounds like, oh, we're not gonna make money because it's not direct response, but some of these emails are sometimes the highest revenue generating for our clients. And it also starts to train your customers, uh, their subconscious mind. Uh, like, oh, I really like your brand's email. So I always wanna see what's happening. And so if you can get somebody really engaged and hyper engaged with your email list, what ends up happening is come Q4, they're gonna open your email in a sea of uh, you know thousands of other brands that are hitting them up. They're gonna go to yours because they're used to opening it. I mean, think about how you open your phone and naturally first click to Instagram or Facebook, or I mean, some of you are probably addicted to LinkedIn or whatever your, your, your nervous social tick is. It's the same with people, you know, you run out of those social channels and you end up going to your inbox, you click on the brands you love first. So start building uh, those relationships now and sending content that's not just sale, not just new product. Another reason, we kind of already touched on this. People don't buy because they don't trust you. They don't know you. They found you on a Facebook ad. Somehow they end up on your email list. Maybe they bought before, maybe they don't. Um, but let's not take any risks come Black Friday showcase those customer reviews, build that trust before. So here's an example from Lather. Uh, they've got a testimonial here. Uh, you can even make it stronger if you've got influencers. Whatever social proof and trust factors you have, bake those into uh, your email strategy and really make sure coming into Black Friday, like people know who you are. They have no objections. They love your brand because you're sending stuff that's building up customers, not just sales you all the time. And you're also trustworthy by showcasing these reviews and building this trust. Last thing, uh, people don't buy because they don't, no, you have what they want. That's kind of a tongue twister. A lot of don'ts and use and buys. Um, I guess just one buy, but anyway, people don't buy because they don't know what you have. If you have a lot of SKUs, um, you know, you might have a lot of products that people like, but if you keep promoting the same stuff or people don't know about it, um, they won't know what to buy. So one thing you can do leading up to Black Friday is start exposing customers to the rest of your product catalog. Even if they don't buy, uh, you know, try to really get them thinking about like, ooh, I want that. Like, think about how you bought some things. Like, some things you impulse buy, and other things you keep seeing them everywhere, or you see something cool, and then eventually you want to buy it. That's how you want to think about email and strategically placing some of the items in your product catalog uh, in throughout your emails leading up to Q4. Um, and what's great about this is like maybe you have some products that don't sell particularly well, or you have higher margin products, uh, which you're probably going to want to promote a lot more in Q4 because you'll have to spend more on ads. So you can strategically place those. Uh, get into your customer's subconscious mind like we already talked about. Um, and they're not even going to wonder why they wanted XYZ product. But a lot of them might not know it existed, especially if you're buying on mobile. You probably only look at, you know, three to four products before you make a purchase. It's really hard to scroll through hundreds or even thousands of products. So use email strategically to, um, to show people the other products that you do have. All right, step two. It wouldn't be Black Friday. It wouldn't be Q4 if you didn't have a killer holiday offer. So it's not what you think. We're not going to give away the farm. Um, Instead, what you want to do is you want to make it your best promotion of the entire year. A lot of brands should probably reverse engineer their discounting strategy and promotion strategy starting with Q4 uh, because you don't want to give 25% off all year long and then not be able to give something more because that's the, the best discount you can give. So I would back in from your best discount. And I mean, that's a long term strategy thing of the year. Uh, and, uh, that's more a long term email strategy that we get into with our clients, but thinking about like what's your biggest promotion and then like using that only for the most important things. Uh, like win back or Q4. <clears throat> but anyway, you don't have to give away the farm. It doesn't have to be huge, but it should be something bigger than normal uh, or at least like really interesting and creative because the inbox is crowded. So if you just give, you know, a dollar off, it's like, why should I shop with you? Um, that being said, there's two things that we keep an eye on. Uh, it's really important that you make it a win-win. So number one, it's a no brainer for the customer. And number two, it's profitable for you because if it's not profitable for you, what's the point? Uh, you know, we've A-B tested this a lot, uh, comparing, you know, 10 to 15%. It's not so much of a big gap on conversion wise, uh, but, you know, 10 to 20%, there's a bigger gap. But at the end of the day, you're going to drive more revenue with a promotion anyway. But but it needs to be profitable, especially if you bootstrap your business, especially as ad costs are becoming more and more expensive. <clears throat> so some examples, if you normally do 15% off, you can do 25% off. If you're normally running free shipping, you can offer 10% off. Um, oh, what if you don't discount your luxury brand? I mean, figure something out. Maybe it's the one time a year that you do discount, you absolutely crush, or maybe you do, you know, some sort of promotional strategy where you're, you're doing free gift with purchase, expired shipping, gift wrapping. There's different ways you can get creative. I would look at the brands you look up to and see what they did in years past. Um, you know, they're more luxury or more premium. Uh, but in general, like it doesn't have to be complex, just make it better than it was. Um, and don't even necessarily make it stand out from competitors, but make it stand out from your typical offers and really go after your key customers. Cause the majority of your 
uh, you know, Black Friday Q4 revenue. It's kind of getting spread out this year, which I'll share in a second. Um, it's going to come from people who already know you. <clears throat> Step three. Okay, so you might think, okay, we got the great offer. Our list is warmed up. Now we just, you know, spray our list into oblivion. <laughs> Wrong. Like that used to work. It used to be, okay, you email more, you make more money, and that still works at a level. But customers are getting smarter, and it's not that easy because it's super competitive. Um, so here's an example of an inbox during Q4. It's super crowded. Uh, so you can't just send one email and hope for the best. Um, also, quick pro tip. I mean, one of these subject lines stands out a lot more than the rest. Uh, it's not to say go use emojis, but uh, it's just interesting to, you know, you could Photoshop in what your subject lines would look like and see how they would stand out uh, in comparison. But anyway, you can't just send one email and hope for the best. So start to ramp up your cadence into Q4. Uh, you know, it might be daily if you send a lot already. If you're just sending once or twice a month, you know, you can get away with a, a little bit less, but you should be sending as much as possible but also balancing the content that you're sending. Uh, so not only ramping up your sending cadence, but also work hard on the emails because you're competing with tons of other brands. Um, so have emails that when people open them, they look really good. Uh, this is our client Casely, like they launched a, a new phone case that, uh, you know, Sriracha theme. So we did a really fun Sriracha themed email. Uh, you just want things that are gonna stand out and grab people's attention in a crowded inbox because it's really easy to, you know, go to the next email, really easy to get rid of it. So you really wanna make sure you're putting your best creativity into the copy and the strategy design especially if your emails don't look good and you have a high-end brand and you want to really, you know, communicate that, uh, you, you really need to get things dialed in and, and not just be standing out from a, by sending more, but also by putting together really great emails. It's not enough to build a brand in the 2020s uh, to have a mediocre email program. You really need to build something world-class. So bonus pro tips for 2020 uh, in particular, <clears throat> you are going to want to launch your sale November 1, maybe sooner, maybe later, but November 1 is a good date to not just beat your competition. Like that's kind of what happened in years past. But this year, your big like enemy is like shipping uh, when it comes to Q4. And, uh, you know, like through the podcast, through the brands we work with, like kind of the insider info is like November 1 is going to be a big day for a lot of brands to be starting their sales. Um, and USPS is just probably, you know, FedEx as, as much as they're going to try. And I mean, we've already seen the news. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So you don't want to leave anything to chance. You don't want to wait till you know the end of November to really get things started. Maybe you can amp things up then, but really start thinking ahead. I mean, this is only a month away, um, and you probably want to do it sooner rather than later. This year, especially with shipping and, and how everything is factoring in. Next pro tip is optimize your band and card sequences. So in addition to priming your list, uh, creating a great offer, sending more, and sending better. And launching your sale early, you really want to optimize your banner cards because even smaller brands that aren't doing a ton of revenue monthly or yearly can easily have over a million dollars in abandoned cards on Cyber Weekend alone. Uh, this is actually a really scary statistic. Um, like you can you can literally go run this report right after this or right now, but go check how many banner cards you had last year in Q4 in November and on Cyber Weekend. It's probably a number that'll make you sick inside. Um, so it's definitely something that you want to get dialed in. I mean, we have clients who, who've hired us, you know, a couple months ago to start optimizing their abandoned carts because they've had over a million dollars in abandoned carts on cyber weekend. I mean, you just recovered 10% of those. That's an extra hundred grand in a weekend. Um, so really getting that dialed is extremely, extremely important. All right. So quick recap, first things first, you want to warm up your email list. You want to make sure that you're adding value, addressing objections and sending, sending thoughtful emails leading up to your promotional strategy. Um, so step two, come up with that killer offer, make it stand out, make it a good one. And then step three, be assertive with your email promotion. So send a little bit more up that cadence. And then in addition to that, uh, you also want to start sending more creative campaigns that really stand out in the crowded inbox. Cause it's one thing to get somebody to open, uh, but while you have their attention, it's so small and so limited. Uh, you really want to make sure that they that you're making the most of that attention because the average email is looked at for less than 10 seconds and that number is shrinking every single year. So that's the quick recap. Also dial in your banned cards, launch your sale early, <laughs> all of that jazz. Uh, there's way too much for us to cover in this you know quick 30 minute session. I try to pack it as much as I could. Um, and, and, and that pretty much wraps it up. So more from us, if you want to get more in-depth Q4 email strategy guides and resources, you can go to wavebreak.co slash resources. Uh, we just did a huge event with uh, Justuno, Gorgeous, and a bunch of other really great companies on uh, that we call our Q4 Method event. You can get access to that at q4method.com, spelled like Q4 uh, with a number four, um, where we go behind the scenes on shipping, email, SMS, Postscript was there. I know they're talking today as well. Um, 
how to deal with shipping, more customer support, so many different topics. That's q4method.com. Uh, you listen to our interviews with top brand CEOs and marketers at wavebreakpodcast.com. Or if you heard all this, uh, you're, you're brand doing significant revenue and you feel like you're leaving money on the table and there's not a lot of time left and you're, you're thinking about how you could do this in-house or what opportunities there are, uh, you learn more about uh, working with us at wavebreak.co slash call and you can schedule a team with a uh, schedule a call with me and my team and we can dive in on what that might look like. Um, and if you have any questions, we're going to be heading to the booth after this. We actually have like uh, seven minutes still in the session. Um, we're going to go to the booth after this uh, to answer questions. Um, and then, yeah, so if you've had questions throughout all of this, we can get more tactical over in the booth, uh, which I'll be heading it over to you after this. So hope this was super valuable uh, and helpful. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at the booth. I mean, in the meantime, I don't know if we have time here to take other questions from the chat here. Um, but if you guys want to start throwing questions in or start writing them down, um, let me know and I can do my best to answer a few. I think we have five minutes left. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be in the booth uh, with me and some of my team and we'll be able to help answer some there. Oh, sorry, Valerie. Hopefully there'll be a recording. Either way, it looks like there'll be a recording because the session's being recorded. If you want to get this, uh, you can go to... Oh, wait, how do, I, how do I do this? It's going to... Uh, i go back. There we go. You go to wavebreak.co slash resources and you can get this this whole thing there as well. Yeah, like we've... Uh, we can get a copy of the slide somehow. If you go to wavebreak.co slash resources... Uh, sign up for your email list and we, we send stuff like this all the time. Um, we got even more stuff coming that's a lot more tactical. And we can answer more specific questions um, in the expo booth in the next five minutes. Yeah, I think we'll be sending the recording too, Valerie. Uh, recording. Also, if the recording comes out, maybe you guys can watch in half speed. <laughs> There's a lot to get through with not that much time. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Some questions coming in here. Um, oh, is, is the booth only through VIP or the recording through VIP? Uh, I, I would go to wavebreak.co slash resources because either way, like a lot of this info is on our website already. Um, okay, do you just support people with email or other marketing strategies? Uh, we're, we're purely focused on email and SMS um, and the strategies that support it. Um, so that's all we do. Um, we just go really deep with that. Do you have suggestions for Q4 for micro brands that have recently launched starting from zero? Yeah, I mean, it's just a different game. Um, oh yeah, thanks thanks for linking that, uh, Ramona. And yeah, as far as um, for, for, for micro brands, oh sweet, look at those links. <laughs> thanks for linking that, Ramona. Um, but yeah, for micro brands who, who, who just launched, um, what you can do is uh, you just build your list a little differently um, and then also start thinking about next year and how you can build your list for next year. Like that's the big thing is like, we've been strategizing this and building out these strategies for our clients for the last, um, you know, <laughs> since like May and June. Uh, so really get started now. I'm thinking about next year also. So making sure you're building your list, growing your list, and you're doing that all from day one. Uh, we'll get brands who come to us selling millions of dollars a year already and they haven't sent a single email um, or their list has been burnt to a crisp or it's super inactive. So I would just keep that going. And then, you know, in the meantime for Black Friday and Q4, I mean, do what you can as far as, you know, uh, you know, more scalable channels that you can afford to, um, you know, even if it means putting your family on your email list and, and, and hustling or uh, trying to build a, uh, a list super fast. Oh, yeah, it looks like uh, Phil says you can purchase recordings of all the sessions uh, at e-commerceday.com. E and also more in-depth resources on this at waybreak.co slash resources as well. You're welcome, Ramona. Thank you for, for, for linking everything up in the chat. We'll be going to the, the, the booth after this. If you guys have more specific questions, we can talk in there. Uh, because we only have like three minutes left, but uh, this, is, this has been super fun. It's great to have conference vibe, uh, even though we can't be together in person.
Hope everyone found this valuable. If you guys have questions, you can hit us up at uh, wearebreak.co slash call. Schedule a time there. Uh, you can dive into our podcast. You can check out our resources. Uh, if you missed the talk, go to wavebreak.co slash resources and check out those similar resources. Get on our email list because we send out stuff like this all the time. And then also, uh, you know, check out the other resources we have there that dive into some of these topics in a little bit more detail. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for coming out. It was, it was, it was really good to speak. I look forward to seeing a lot of you guys in the booth after this to uh, answer some questions and we dive a little deeper, get a little bit more tactical. Uh, it's been a great event so far and there's going to be a lot of other great speakers throughout the day. And uh, yeah, it's super fun that we're all able to connect despite, uh, you know, the different world 2020s in and um, I wish you guys the best. Uh, there's a lot of like, despite, you know, rising ad costs and all these you know, shipping and all these things working against us, this is going to be a huge Q4 and the brands that really double down and give it 110% are gonna win very big. Um, the winners are gonna win big and it's it's really not that difficult to win big. Like you just gotta do it. Um, and I believe in all of you, so really excited. Awesome, so we've got 60 seconds left. If, if you uh, don't wanna miss out, if you wanna keep this conversation going, go over to our booth. Uh, you can learn more about us at wavebreak.co. You can schedule a call at wavebreak.co slash call. You can get access to these strategies a lot more in depth at wavebreak.co slash resources. Wish you all the best in Q4. You're going to absolutely dominate. Uh, if you believe you can and you do the work, it'll happen. Um, and it's, it's going to be really great. And uh, we're going to go to sleep on Christmas Eve, a very, very happy people and be able to put our heads down and, and rest nicely uh, into Christmas. So hope everybody has a great day. Uh, awesome talks uh, later on. Make sure you check them out. Um, I look forward to seeing you all in the booth after this. I'll talk to you guys soon.